and welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Tanya Dotson-Winkler. Tanya is a transformational time management specialist who works with busy, time-starved professionals. Now, Tanya and I go way back in time. In fact, we were classmates at Princeton University, but I'll let her tell you more about that in a few moments. Tanya, welcome to Significant TV. Thank you so much, Fran. It's a pleasure to be here. It is kind of cool to have both of us on the same set. And guess what? We're kind of Princeton color coordinated. Did Orange we do and black. this or what? Okay, yeah, we, yeah did we did this. <laughs> I mean, can you believe that it's been 30 five years since we graduated? I, no. No. So the short answer is no. <laughs> the long answer is no. <laughs> it's just, wow, it just went so fast. What happened to the, dare I say, time? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, we filled it up with life. With life. Absolutely, and uh, still doing it, and that's mm -hmm. what has us be here today. So it's, it's really, life is going well, time is moving along, and it looks like it's treating us both pretty well. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I really feel blessed. And I'm so glad that you took some time to come down from New York uh, to see me. And I know that you've traveled around the world. Yes. So for the audience who doesn't quite know, yeah. um, what, have, what sort of brought you into the world of entrepreneurship way back when? Because right. it's not like we were business majors at Princeton. No, not at no. all. I was a psych major. I did a little you know, roundabout tour of medical school for a, a year and a half, realized that wasn't really my tribe, and uh, did some research. Uh, I was working in the AIDS field uh, back in the trenches, back in the, the really hard times of, of AIDS research in 87. Then I went to a, um, I did a presentation at the AIDS conference in Stockholm in 1988, and that's what took me to Europe. Wow. Yeah. So that, I went to Europe in uh, 1989, and I settled in Copenhagen, Denmark, and started working and learning the language. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, having jobs inside of the AIDS field until 1996. Uh, lost a very, very good friend, and that was 10 years of AIDS research and, and work, psychosocial counseling and all of that. And I thought, okay, now it's time to you know get some life into the picture and do something different. So uh, I basically went and played with children for three years and uh, had a great time. And then uh, the entrepreneurial bug got a hold of me because in the after-school program, our children were aging out at about 14. And, you know, these were these sweet little kids you had had for two, three years in the after-school program. And then all of a sudden, the local police would start to come around and ask questions about, have you seen Mustafa? I said, yeah, I saw him the other day. He came by to say hello. Well, next time you see him, tell him the local police need to have a conversation with him. It's like, what's going on here? And that happened more times than I like to, you know, remember. Um, it seemed like our children were falling into a gap between the after-school program and then, you know, segueing into adulthood. So they were getting bored. They had nothing to do. So they'd be at the local mall and shoplift and do dumb things and graffiti and stuff like that. So I happened to be in a leadership program at the time. And there was another woman who was a social worker who was in the same leadership program. People heard us talking about something needs to be done for these children and their families, put us together. And that was my very first company. It's called Bridge Builders in Copenhagen. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that and saying, wow, mm -hmm. you know, you're in a totally different country and yeah. you're doing something that's really impactful, yeah. very significant. Yes, exactly. Very significant. And it was really, it meant a lot to us to get the, to have the success that we did because of the amount of families that we worked with and the amount of, you know, um, difference that we could make for these families and their children. We still get emails, they're on Facebook with us. They're now, you know, a lot of them are now married with children of their own and they, you know, wish us happy birthday, thanks for everything you've done. You know, when you get that over and over again, it's just, it is heartening. Very heartening. So I hear a thread in this passion. Yeah. Um, you know, go a year and a half in medical school and then deciding not to do it. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. I mean, it, it takes courage mm -hmm. to start and say, no, wait. Yeah. What I need, what I am destined to do is different. It is. And then to pick up and, you know, begin to speak and extend yourself and share mm -hmm. and train others mm -hmm. also takes courage. Yeah. In working with those children, mm -hmm. What's something that you've taken out of that experience that is still part of your belief system even today? 
Um, I would say basically to commit. You know, commitment is my big thing. It's, you know, commitment and perseverance are my big thing. So when I would work with the children, it'd be like, and the young people, when they were going up to their exams, it's like, it doesn't matter how you do, how well you do or how poorly you do. It's it, What matters is that you're committed to getting the thing done. You know, if you're committed to getting a, a in, in Denmark, it's a, called a ninth grade exam so that they can go on to higher education. If you're committed to that, just have that in front of you. That's all that you need to be committed to. And however the, the results fall out, we can work with that. But, you know, what happens when you don't get committed, you know, or you aren't committed is that you'll pull back. There's hesitancy. There's, you know, ooh, you know, there's a back door open. Oh, maybe I didn't want to do this anyway. And that keeps, that's the, the start stop that so many of our young people uh, experience. So commitment is my big thing. You know, just dive in head first like I did after medical school. I just dove in head first and said, okay, let me get committed to what, to making a difference in the world and see what happens. And this is what's happened three companies later. Three companies later. Three companies so the later, first yeah. company was called? It was called Bobisina in Danish, which is called Bridge Builders. The second company was called Synergy People, and that was my coaching company. And this company is 180 degree time management. Time is not the enemy. Time is not the enemy. Yeah. I want to go back. Share what you said about commitment in Danish? In Danish? In Danish, yes. Okay, all right. So, I, it's a test. It's a test. Right. Well, you know what? Okay. So, Don't be fearful because I won't know if you're saying you it correct won't. or not. <laughs> <laughs> Så uh, det jeg mente var, at uh, når man er committed, og det har man ikke rigtig et ord for på, på dansk, men når man er committed, så uh, holder man op med at uh, stoppe sig selv. Man holder op med at uh, uh, ikke gå i gang med det, man gør. Man kaster sig bare ud i det, og så går man bare det ud af. I got the committed a few times. And cast aside? Uh, cast it? aside ud af, or cast aside ud i, which is throw yourself into it. Ah. Yeah. And what's interesting is that there is no word for commitment in Danish, which is what? why we use committed. Yes, there's duty uh, and there's obligated, but there is no word for commitment. So Danes use committed as well. Pretty cool. Yeah. Share a little bit about Synergy People. I think that's okay. when I connected with you yes. on Facebook. That's and right. I'm like, oh my goodness, here's another Princetonian. They're doing coaching. Right. Again, in another country. Right. And um, I was really fascinated mm -hmm. by how you were bringing together concepts and working with people. Talk a little well, it, bit about you that. You know, it's really interesting because coaching is coaching. Whether you're coaching young people or you're coaching adults, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, you're using a lot of the same tools. So what I found interesting was that the coaching that I gave the young people could transfer or translate to coaching for, for older people, for, for adults, especially in uh, career transition. So I kind of fell into a niche of career transition, and it was the exact same coaching all over again. You know, what do you see? How do you see yourself in the future? What's in the way right now? What would you need to give up in order to have that future be realized? At same technique every single time, you know, so that's what I started doing. And I fell into a niche of performing artists funny enough. And it was a, a lot of them that were, you know, maybe switching genre from had a 25 year career in pop and now they wanted to segue into jazz. Um, there was a band that was having trouble getting itself organized in order to, you know, uh, get the gigs that they really, really wanted. You know, so it's same thing, exact same thing. Just, you know, it, where do you see yourself? What's in the way? And I, my specialty is kind of listening and teasing out that thing that's in the way. And one of the things I say, my superpower is that I can hear what you're not saying. Ooh, I like that superpower. That's a superpower, yeah. Superpower, ooh, so, okay, <laughs> let's let's build on that. Okay. So, as a superwoman, using yeah. your superpower. <laughs> only for good. Uh, only, only for, for good. good, that's good. Um, you have, in the name of your current company, mm -hmm. you have transformational. Yes. You have transformed, you have reinvented. A uh, previous guest, Lisa Kramer, talked about reinventing yourself. Yes. And you are transforming yes. yourself and others. Yeah. Why time management? Oh, well, here's the thing. I was working with all of these clients, and when we would get past the, the flip that they wanted to do in their careers, and they would start, you know, getting um, getting the gigs that they wanted, the band would start expanding, um, the, the their, their reputation would get out into the world, all of a sudden they had all of these things coming at them that they couldn't manage, and then they started asking me, do you do time management? And I was like, well, I could. 
Because again, it's the same principles that I apply. Find out what is in the way, find out what's at the root. So I don't work with symptoms because, you know, it's just like uh, cutting weeds. If you work with the symptoms, they just grow back. Right. So what I do is, you know, my company is called 180 Degree Time. I flip it on its head so that the roots are up at the top. Oh no, exposure. Then, exposure, oh. expose the roots. And then, but we rip it up, we kind of take the dust off, the dirt off, and we look at what's at the root and then we can work with that. So that, you know, you're not constantly experiencing the same symptomology all over and over and over again. So that's, again, one of the things that I'm, I'm good at. I'm good at working with root cause of, of your time management issue. And, um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, the root cause. And, and flipping things on its head. Flipping I like to do things on its yeah, head. Yeah, I like to do that. <laughs> okay. So as an entrepreneur, you've probably experienced a few challenges here and there. What's a, what's a challenge that you've overcome and has made you stronger as a serial entrepreneur since this is your right. third business? Yeah. Well, you know, I have also gone through a divorce. And I think one of your other guests was talking about, you know, going through divorce and how that, you know, kind of requires you to reinvent yourself if you don't want to make the same mistake over and over again. So the first company, uh, I was going through a divorce. We had been working on this for about eight months. And bam, there it is. You know, that, that's the situation. So you got to move or you have, you know, your partner moves or, you know, everything is different now. So, you know, I threw myself out there and created the company in spite of the fact that I was going through this divorce. Um, and that required me to use different parts of myself than I had been using before. And that's where I, you know, that was the first reinvention, right? Then after working with the children, to segue from working with children to working with adults, that was the second reinvention. This is my third reincarnation because this was the, this is the distilling. This is taking all of my coaching uh, tools, everything that's in my toolbox, and distilling it down and focusing it on one thing. Because I found that coach, you, you can coach on anything. And it was just getting so broad. You know, people were asking me to, you know, can you do relationships? Yeah, I can do relationships. Can you coach me on? Yeah, I can do. And then it was like, thank God someone asked me, do you do time management? Great! That's what I'm <laughs> going to focus on from now on. So for the last six years, I've been focused on time management. And I often, when I work with folks, ask them to focus their energy for action. And mm -hmm. it sounds like that's what you've done. Yes. Our time in this interview is quickly coming to an end. Right. And I'd love for you to share a significant quote and or lesson that's yeah. really important to you. You know, I always um, I always refer to this that I'm going to read it. Um, William Hitch Hutchinson Murray from the Scottish Himalayan Expedition, and it talks about commitment. And he says, until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. That the moment one definitely commits myself, commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would have never, never otherwise occurred. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of this. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic. Yeah. That's my favorite quote. Thank you, you so do. much. You do. Thank Tanya, you. it's been a pleasure having you on the show. And again, I feel like from Denmark to Newark, <laughs> Princeton to the world. Uh, I, I love your energy. Thank you. I'm just very excited that you're here and continuing to share your gifts in a transformational way. Thank you so and much. And the flipping as a gardener. Flipping it. Flipping. I like that. Flip it. <laughs> Get to the root cause. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you so much, Fran. It's been an honor. Thank you. Significant TV, significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. When is the last time that you flipped your life and examined from a 180 degree angle? Tanya Dotson Winkler can help you do that. Transformational time management specialist. That's significant.